Welcome to 5 Minute School and in today's video we're going to talk about countercurrent multiplication which is the interaction between the ascending and descending limb. So just to begin, the concentration of the tubular fluid in the descending limb reflects the concentration of the surrounding interstitial fluid. So the concentration of the surrounding interstitial fluid is raised by the active extrusion of salt from the ascending limb. And this is a positive feedback mechanism because we multiply the concentration of the interstitial fluid and the descending limb fluid. So it's known as the countercurrent multiplier system. So to give an example, if the fluid leaving the, de the descending limb, which is this portion here, is isoosmotic, so 300 milliosmoles, in the ascending limb, sodium chloride is going to get actively pumped out and trapped in the interstitial fluid by blood vessels caused, called vasorector. Now, the interstitial fluid is now going to be more hypertonic due to this sodium chloride which was pumped out, and this causes some more water to leave the descending limb by osmosis, which makes the filtrate more hypertonic as it reaches the ascending limb. And this process is going to continue until maximum concentration in the inner medulla is reached. Now, let's talk about vasorector. So a long thin walled vessel that parallels the loop of Henle of the juxtamedullary nephrons. And they help to keep salt pumped out from the ascending limb of the loop of Henle to remain in the interstitial fluid and the water that's pumped out of the descending limb to be removed. Now we have the descending vasorector, and the characteristic it has the ca characteristics of both capillaries and arterioles because it has a continuous epithelium and is surrounded by smooth muscle remnants. Wait, well, sorry, the continuous epithelium is surrounded by smooth muscle remnants, and these vessels have urea transporters and aquaporin proteins or water channel proteins. And we have the ascending vasorector, which is uh, capillaries with fenestrated endothelium, so they have gaps in them. They have gaps between the endothelial cells and this allows for rapid rates of diffusion. Now let's talk about the countercurrent exchange. And this is a method of maintaining hypertonicity of the renal medulla. So salt and other dissolved substances like urea, for example, are present in high concentrations in the interstitial fluid and they diffuse into the des descending vasorector. Now these same solutes then pass dif passively diffuse back out of the ascending vasorector and back into the interstitial fluid to complete the countercurrent exchange. And the reason this occurs is because at each level of the medulla, the concentration of solutes increases as you go higher up in the ascending vessels uh, in comparison to the interstitial fluid. And the concentration of the solutes is higher in the interstitial fluid than the descending vessel. So solutes are recirculated and trapped, basically. So, the walls of the vasorector are permeable to water, sodium chloride and urea, but not to plasma proteins. Therefore, we have something which is known as colloid osmotic pressure within the vasorector and it's higher than surrounding tissue fluid, which results in movement of water from the interstitial fluid into the ascending vasorector so that it can be removed from the renal medulla. And this removal of water is needed to maintain hypertonicity of the interstitial fluid. That's everything I want to discuss in today's video. Thank you very much for watching.